Nice. So one, four, five emergency response plan. So we're in a different scenario here now. This is not, uh, let's say, compatible with an operations response plan. With an operations response plan, we're considering what can happen, uh, incidents and accidents related to the aircraft, uh, down route, uh, what potential uh, negative events that can happen and how we're going to set up our communication processes, our management processes, uh, how we're going to send our uh, uh, go team and all the rest of this stuff. So in a 145, we could have different emergency scenarios. So uh, many examples, many, many examples. Uh, one example, uh, there was a fire on board the aircraft in the hangar. There was two guys painting inside the cabin and it was a large aeroplane. It was a, an, a, an Airbus A300 size aeroplane. They were painting in the cabin and uh, something happened with the cellulose paint and the lighting that was in there and the paper that was uh, put to, uh, 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 let's say, protect the parts they were not painting. And there was a flashover. And very, very quickly, the fire took hold. And so these two guys panicked. One guy ran to the back of the aeroplane. One guy ran to the front of the aeroplane. The guy that ran to the back realized there was no steps. He could have closed the door, armed and activated a slide and slid to the floor. But instead, he jumped and broke both legs. He was lucky that that's all he did. He could have done more, of course. So he, he broke both legs. The guy that ran to the front went into the hangar because they were painting. It was lunchtime uh, deliberately. The hangar was empty. So he goes running through the hangar. Help, fire, fire, fire. He didn't have a clue what to do. Uh, this is a true story, by the way. I won't name the airline. I won't name the country, but it's a true story. Uh, 45 minutes later, yippee, the fire brigade arrive. 45 minutes by which time the aircraft was totally destroyed. Very lucky the height of the hangar roof meant that the hangar didn't catch fire. So that's a complete disaster. So just unpack that a little bit. What is in your organisation the training that's given people in terms of fire first responders? Do you give fire training? Do people know what to do? If somebody is working without fire training, i.e. the painters, do we have fire extinguishers on call and do we have a fire marshal available? Uh, and so it's this mindset that we consider what happens. Uh, another one, a guy's working inside a fuel tank and he has uh, a reaction and he can't get out. He needs help. How are you going to deal with that? Because the worst case now is we're going to take an angle grinder to the wing to make a hole to get this guy out. This is serious. So have we looked at our procedures for fuel tank entry? Uh, we have, for example, we have a fuel tank safety training course, which is mandatory, initial and recurrent. You know this. Most of you know this. Uh, we have a, another course which is relating to fuel tank entry which almost nobody's interested in. Why? Because it's not mandatory. But when I, as an auditor, look at fuel tank procedures, I quite often see gaps. Uh, so the takeaway from this, has the safety system looked at the different areas within the 145 where there are potential issues and have we addressed them in uh, the most effective way for our business? OK, so that's a little bit of background. Uh, the intention of our organisation is to create an emergency response plan which can be enabled and used by senior personnel within the organisation. Uh, how to build a list of choosing or chosen emergencies. Use the risk register approach. What does that mean? Well, here's another reason why we want a risk register. Let's look at the biggest risks we've identified and then see if we can connect them to a type of emergency scenario. Uh, what happens if uh, there is a medical emergency? What happens if there is another type of emergency within the hangar environment? So uh, 
to review all currently understood risks, report, perform a risk assessment, uh, create a, docu a documented checklist, which lists the steps which would be taken in each role of the organization. And we can start using this to build our uh, emergency response manual. Uh, and it's a step by step process. It's it's not going to be something that's going to immediately be available, but it will help us as we start moving in that direction. And, and we can start with the environment of health and safety. If somebody has a stroke, uh, could we deal with it? Uh, I had a real life situation just in two minutes to share this story with you. Uh, I'm the supervisor on a maintenance check. The aircraft is a DC-10. I've got three guys in the uh, the aft compartment. Uh, one of these guys is a diabetic and uh, they'd been too long in the department. And the guy who is a diabetic started having a, a, a an insulin short. Uh, he was shaking because uh, uh, he'd left it too long to take his uh, injection and he needed help. Uh, unfortunately, the guys had accessed this compartment using a lifting platform. The lifting platform uh, was powered by uh, propane gas and the gas had run out. But they were not worried because the next step is to lower the platform. However, this guy in the compartment is shaking and uh, he doesn't think he can get out. So one of the other guys uh, goes and instead of dropping the lifting platform, he and this is not correct either, by the way, but he climbs down the outside in order to go and get some emergency sugar for this guy. He comes running back from the canteen. And meanwhile, in the compartment is the guy that's shaking. And the other person who we found out later is claustrophobic. And he couldn't stay any longer in this compartment with the guy who's shaking. So he decided he was going to exit the situation. So he went on the platform and lowered the platform to the ground. So we've now got a guy shaking in a compartment. And you know how high a DC-10 compartment is at the tail under the engine. Uh, and we've got people trying to throw sugar cubes into the compartment from the ground. It, it would be laughable if it wasn't serious. It, it was a very serious situation. Meanwhile, somebody has gone and got uh, another replacement propane tank, has installed the propane tank, and now we, we managed to recover the situation. So in the aftermath, the guy who was uh, a, a diabetic, he was OK. The guy who exited the compartment because he was claustrophobic, everybody blamed him, basically Nobody wanted to talk to him because he was the culprit, but he's just suffering from a condition, whether it's agoraphobia or claustrophobia, but he's suffering from condition. So he's not the bad guy in this story, but nobody wanted to work with him. And six months later, he left the organization. So think about this from an emergency response point of view. Uh, we were absolutely unprepared. Do you know if any of your employees are claustrophobic because if they don't share that with you and if you don't empower them to share it with you, you might find yourself in such a situation. You put a claustrophobic guy into a tight compartment and he has a fit, how are you going to get him out? And so on and so on. So I'm doing this because I just want to change your mindset about what emergency response means within a 145 environment. It's not the same as if we put uh, our operational hat on and think about it in terms of an operation environment. Uh, so following lists, potential hazards, uh, and we can go down this list related to uh, fire, explosion, flood, working resources, uh, residual impact of a disaster, uh, climatic events, natural disasters, uh, food poisoning, epidemic, <laughs> COVID, uh, death or suicide at the workplace. Uh, and in my long career, uh, I've actually uh, known two people who were killed in the workplace. Uh, I know of one guy who caused the death of another person by applying hydraulics to the aeroplane. And this guy was trapped in a flying control and he died because of his injuries. Uh, so it happens, guys. It really happens. And, and if you wait long enough, 
uh, it will be ha it'll happen on your watch. So absolutely, there is work to do in respect of the emergency response story. Uh, continuous improvement uh, contained within the emergency response plan may, amongst others, be obtained by conducting a review of the relevant parts of the emergency response plan after a full or partial exercise. 